What's your biggest following on social media at this point, platform-wise? Um, TikTok. And how many followers do you currently have? I currently have um, 1.9 million followers on TikTok. And for time reference, it's March 2021. Mm -hmm. Now, how were you first introduced to TikTok? How did things start? Um, so originally, my younger brother, Ajani, and my older brother, Devante, they were creating dances on the platform, and they were, you know, they blew up super fast. They created the Get Up, they created the Bird Dance, um, they created City of Angels, a bunch of different dances. And um, when I started appearing in their videos, I was, you know, just their only sister. So they were known to have a bunch of brothers, and I was the only girl um, and they, you know, I was popping up here and there, but I was really behind the scenes doing music a lot um, in Atlanta and in Virginia. When my official kind of introduction to TikTok came, I kind of had like two. So I, the second one was when I moved out to LA with my brothers. Um, they made this whole video and they made a whole song or a whole, they bought this music video for me, did a whole bunch of stuff and they introduced it to TikTok and they told their fans that I had just moved to LA and to blow up my song, Pipe Down. So um, that's what they did. And then we kind of like, we're doing it, you know, I was doing music and stuff and then no guidance kind of happened. And I just wrote gu no guidance out of nowhere and it just blew up. And then that was like my kind of last, like biggest introduction. But I was kind of introduced by them a couple of times before then. When it comes to your two brothers, is it same mother, same father for all three of you? Uh, no, so me and me, well, me and Ajani have the same mom, same dad, and then our older brother Devante, he has, um, he, our, our stepmom is his his mother. Um, so we have different moms, the same father. And uh, for those that aren't familiar with your TikTok, what is your TikTok screen name, username? Um, it's Asian Iri, so it's it's and then A Y Z H A N Y R E. -E. And is there any story to that screen name or username there? Um. So I kind of just, I saw that other artists were, you know, doing the, it's like when they were official artists, they would put like the I am or it's, and it kind of, I just kind of went back and forth with the two different ones and it's Asian I read just looked kind of cool. So I was like, I'm gonna do that one instead. <laughs> now at this point, you're very close to 2 million followers. Yeah, she's pretty dope. <laughs> when it comes to these questions that I'm about to ask you though, just let's start with 1 million, all right? Mm -hmm. Even though you're close to two. What is that like? What does that feel like to have one million followers? For me, it feels like I have one million people that I can give a vibration to. So it's kind of like, you know, wow, these millions of people followed me and now I can now influence these millions of people, this million people with, you know, love and like, this, all this like stuff that I feel like they lack. So for me, when I, my first million was like, oh my gosh, like I can finally like, they'll listen to me. Like I can feed them like knowledge. And it was just kind of cool. It was my first fan base. So it was kind of like what I'm, what I was super excited about. Is it a sense of power? Mm, power in a sense of, you know, you feel like you in, in their lives, you can have some kind of power. For me, it's a more positive, just like a positive influence. So it's like, I feel like, you know, that platform gives you the power to be very influential. And for me, it's like, I think it's a beautiful thing because I feel like, especially little girls, you know, they can, I can have the power to kind of influence them to want to be better for themselves. And I think that's pretty dope. Did you celebrate after crossing the 1 million mark? Um, absolutely. I celebrated after, like, every time I f would see it go up, honestly, I'd be, like, so excited. I'd be like, oh, my gosh, like, I have more. It's so dope. <laughs> Did you do anything specific, though, after the one million mark? Um, as far as, like... Some people do maybe a special celebratory post. Some people may do an exclusive content for crossing that million mark. Um, I think, uh... I didn't do anything like that. I, did, I made a lot of posts. Like, so when I would hit 1.1 or 1.2, I'd make a post. I'd be like, oh, my gosh, we're so close. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, but that was, like, pretty much it. How long did it take to reach 1 million, that first million, time-wise, rough estimate? So if we're going from, like, when I started taking TikTok serious, I would say from April 
to like, I don't remember, I hit a million maybe like in maybe August. So April, May, June, July, probably like four months. But I had followers before then from my brothers. I told you they introduced me. So like they were, they kind of, you know, fed a lot of their fans to my page. So I had maybe like 200K or something like that from them. But I wasn't posting on TikTok. I just was posting with my brothers. So I didn't actually gain my personal fan base until April of last year when I joined, when I moved to LA. When you took TikTok serious, would you post solo content of yourself or were you posting content with your brothers? I'm doing both, really doing like a lot of bit of both, kind of posting with them and then posting a bunch with myself, promoting the song and then m other music. Um, but we still did like stuff together and like made videos together and stuff. Would either of you guys repost the same exact video on all your platforms or was it always different content on each of your platforms when you were all together? Yeah, always different content for each of our platforms. How would you decide what you would use versus what they would use? Whoever comes up with the idea. So it's like, if, I, if I'm like, yo, I have this idea for my page, it'll be so dope, um, then we'll do it for my page. If a Johnny comes to me or Devante, like, hey, I have this idea for my page, then we just, you know, it's kind of just whoever comes up with it. Or sometimes we'll be like, oh, this would be so dope if we do this for your page. Or it kind of just really depends. What's your second biggest following on social media, platform-wise, um, after TikTok? So, does YouTube, can YouTube count? We'll count it for this. Okay, because I'll say YouTube next, because I have, like, I think almost 240,000 subscribers. And then on my Instagram, I have, like, 64,000. So, I'm kind of still building the Instagram. But I feel like my YouTube is definitely, like, um, kind of bigger. I get a lot of traction on YouTube. Out of all three platforms, TikTok, YouTube, and Instagram, which did you start first or take serious first? Um, was it TikTok or was it one of the other platforms? You just went faster on TikTok. Honestly, I'm going to say TikTok only because I've never really been a big social media person. Um, so I was posting on other platforms just as a normal kind of girl, but I didn't really take it serious until... TikTok and it all it became like a career so it was like okay so now I gotta take this serious now I gotta take Instagram serious now I gotta take YouTube serious so it's kind of like it just kind of happened why weren't you ever big on social media when there are some other girls that take it very serious yeah um I think it's because kind of the way I would, we were raised you know I was always our pho phones weren't really like you know, we were excited about going outside and, you know, playing like, you know, making up games and pretend like, act, like we would, me and my brother would make movies when we were little. Like we would pretend to act and we would pretend to be different characters. And like just growing up, I was always into the present moment and always into like, you know, what I could accomplish at the time or like what I was doing at the time. And social media was always taught to us to be kind of, if you weren't using it as a tool, then it could be a distraction. And so I just, you know, I was just always doing music or working and never really like had time for like, you know, to be on social media constantly. And I still struggle with it to this day. Like I'm still trying to learn to be like super punctual with my social media because I'm just so present in the moment all the time. Your brothers were already taking social media serious before you did. Uh, yeah, my little brother started and then my big brother joined him and they were dancing. Um, and then after that, then I kind of got into the social media wave. And when it came to growing up under the same roof in the same household, did you grow up with both brothers? So I grew up with um, a Johnny, and then I have a little brother named Micah, who I we also, the three of us grew up together like our whole lives. And then when I was about 14, um, a bunch of stuff happened. I was living, we were living with my grandparents, and my father, uh, you know, told us that he had a, another brother. And we were just kind of like, what? Like, you have another brother? That's crazy. And we were just really excited. We, you know, we figured it was just adult stuff, you know, which all the adults were pretty honest about the situation. It was just, you know, it was what it was. And but when we got to meet, we were just, like, inseparable. And ever since we met and our, we left our grandparents and went to New York with our father and our now stepmother and brothers and stuff, we've just, you know, we grew up like 16 or 17 and we grew, up, we grew up together, like, you know, lived together and it kind of feels like we've, it has, we haven't even, like we've like grown up our whole lives, kind of how it feels, it's pretty crazy. 
Now, what do you think drove your TikTok platform uh, profile on that platform to a million? When I dropped No Guidance, 100 um, percent. Because I was doing TikTok with my brothers, and when I first moved to Cali, I made a few videos on my page with the boys that went really viral. So I made one of him cut my braids, and it went like, it got like, ten, I think almost 10 million views, I think. And then I made this video where I was opening a package that my homegirl gave me, and it actually happened in real life. Like, I was opening this package, and I was trying to show all the boys what she had bought me for my birthday, and they were all like, not paying attention to me and I was like can you guys just pretend to be girls for five seconds and just like hype me up and they all started oh my god it's so cute oh my god so I was like bro we have to reenact that like right now that was so funny and we reenacted it and that it got like yeah, 20 million Brent Rivera like remade it and stuff and so I had a few videos that were moving but it wasn't until no guidance that like really drove me to a million, million, especially when Charlie hit the dance, that like really did it for me. And can you explain what No Guidance is? Um, so No Guidance was originally um, a song by Chris Brown and Drake. Of course, you know, everyone knows that, it's a super smash. Um, and uh, they, had a, they had a sample from Shea Akru, who, which is, um, he wrote this song called Before I Die, which is the original song that was first made. They uh, used the sample, and then um, a few years later, last year, the sample or the instrumental was um, trending on TikTok. And so I was in the mall one day and I'm like, uh, you know, I was kind of in a funk. I wasn't really in the best mood. And I was just scrolling on TikTok and I, you know, started kind of humming to the instrumental and I just kept looping it. And I was like, it would actually be kind of cool if I could like write a little freestyle to it, you know, just to ease my mind or whatever. And then later I showed my homegirl and it like went viral and it's just this remix that I wrote and I wrote my own verses and I used instead of using the no guidance hook I used Shea Akru's hook and kind of mashed like the two songs and just made like a girl version and I really had no intentions of even making it a real song it was just everybody loved it so much that I was like damn I should probably I should probably try it out and just see how it goes so yeah did pretty good <laughs> And it was just a, a post. It wasn't anything special that you did other than that. Yeah, all it was was it was just a video I'm, that me and my homegirl Napoor and my other friend Bria made. And they convinced me to do it. They were like, please, just, just we'll sing it with you. Just just wrap your verse. They're going to love it. And I was like, oh, I don't know. And so we just did it. And I just posted it. And then like three days later, I woke up. And on Napoor's page, it was at, like three million. And everybody was like, make this a song. Make this a song. So I was like... Shit. I was like, okay, bet. So I called my manager and then we got in the studio and then I just recorded it and then I dropped it like a week later and they loved it. Like, they loved it so much and I just thought it was like the dopest thing ever. So it, was, it happened really fast. It was pretty crazy. Was there ever a response from Drake or Chris Brown to that? <sighs> um, so Drake, no, but Chris's team, we were, you know, we were talking a little bit um but it was just so much involved in the track you know and this it's just like it just would have been like a lot you know to try and you know try and go in there and make it like a an official thing so it just kind of just I let it be what it was it was great for what it was you know but it was all cool you know what I'm saying we just figured it all out and you know making music now I got in a really good position because of the remix so I think it's a really dope a really dope, uh, you know, situation, regardless of how it got worked out. Do you have a strategy with TikTok at this point? Um, yeah, uh, so my fans love when I, um, like, kind of tease them with stuff. They, some of them, like, hate it because they're like, oh, my God, drop this song. But um, I, what I do is I haven't been dropping that, that much because I've been working a lot on the like on the back end and trying to get them like a, really like a full project and really working on like my catalog. Um, but I've, what I've been doing is I've just been kind of like, so after No Guidance, I dropped Holy Class and Holy Class did like really good. Like Nikita Dragon, just like made videos with it and stuff like it did really good. Then I, after the label, I did TLC and uh, now I'm doing Noya. And I'm kind of just like, 
s like slowly giving them music and then I'm like about to start speeding up the process like so they have like all this stuff that they're like oh my gosh like, there's like so much here um my other strategy as well is uh I was doing we were doing the Power Rangers thing for a minute um so that was something that came up with back in October I was kind of sitting there like okay so no guidance was a thing it's still a thing this is great but now you know this is gonna you know, I'm going to have to find something else. So in the meantime, when I'm working on my music and stuff, let's pull a stunt. Like, let's figure out some crazy, like, internet stunt that I could use to put all my friends on and, like, you know, something that would just be super fire and super fun for the kids. And I was just sitting there just, you know, in the studio just thinking about it and thinking, and then it just popped in my head, and I was like, oh, my God, Power Rangers. And I was like, I don't care. I just have to be the pink one. And I just called my friends, and we just, you know, just dressed up as Power Rangers and we made a bunch of videos and kind of, you know, that was like my way of really kind of connecting the dots because when we revealed, all of my comments were like, oh my God, like, do y'all know that Pink is the girl that made no guidance? Like, this is crazy, like, she's a Power Ranger. So that was kind of like a little strategy we used for a minute too that was really, really dope. Do you incorporate your analytics, use your analytics with your strategy? Um, as far as like, you know, like the timing and, Stuff like that. Correct. Absolutely. Sometimes I, um, sometimes I'll play around with them because the analytics sometimes seem like they're not as accurate or maybe as up to date. So what we usually do is we'll kind of test the theory. And so if you know if the analytics says you know your best posting time is at one, you're like okay, well, I'll post at one, but then I'll also post it this time and then I'll post a little bit later to test to see. And sometimes your your better algorithm will be that third post or that second post and it won't even be the 1 p.m. that you know it sometimes says so it kind of just really just depends on like it could change at any minute I feel like is it a quota you have with TikTok and posting so for example do you have a goal of posting once a day or once every day or a certain amount of times per week or things of that nature yeah so um, you know, the ideal situation would be to post like three times a day on TikTok. Like that would be like the ideal for me. Um, I sometimes don't know how to use TikTok to save my life. I kind of get lucky with it sometimes. And I just kind of have my brother give me little cheat codes and stuff. Um, and then oftentimes I like I sometimes I just don't have time. You know, if you want to sit and do a TikTok, like if you know how to if you know TikTok, then, you know, like especially for a fire video, like you got to spend at least like an hour or two trying attempting to do it and it's like you know i'm ripping and running all day and like you know, i just you know because i don't know i haven't do dove into the actual TikTok scene i kind of dove into it as an artist and as like the big sister that was just kind of like you know watching my brothers but i was always into music so i'm still like i said still kind of learning with the TikTok thing and the social media um but it would be lovely to be able to like post like every second because <laughs> TikTok is dope <laughs> Do people ever question your following numbers? Uh, the 1.9? No, I've never really had anyone question it. I mean, it kind of, everyone kind of saw it happen around no guidance. So it was kind of like, you know, it's kind of pretty, pretty much a given. Never ever bought any followers. No, <laughs> that is so boo-boo. Boo <laughs> what is your opinion of that, people that buy followers? Um, well, you know, I feel like you know, I don't like to judge people, you know what I'm saying? So if anybody is watching this, if you have bought followers, you know what I'm saying? I'm not judging you or anything. But I feel like, you know, for the people that do truly follow you, it's beautiful for them to watch an organic grow, an organic growth, and to see you kind of naturally grow and for them to be able to watch the process. So I feel like, you know, if you have a lot of loyal fans and then you kind of turn away from them to go and purchase something for, so that your page can kind of look good, feel like you kind of turned your back on like your organic fan base you know so it's like you know damn you don't even take you took them for granted just for kind of you want your page to look good when if you are really loyal to this group of people this little group turns into the number you bought so it's like you know kind of and it takes away from the work that I feel like you know you kind of have to put in into the work and that part is beautiful you know in my opinion so you do end up signing a recording contract with Republic at some point yes do you remember what your TikTok following was right before you signed? What number it was or? I think it was like 1.7, like 1.7, 1.8, 1.9.
something like that, 1.6, 1.7. And that leads me to my next question was, and it's for people watching also, wondering if signing to a major record label helps with a following count. Um, like, what do you mean? Like You being part of a machine like Republic Records, does that boost your following or does that boost your your brand does that boost your for on TikTok if you get what if you get yeah. the drift of what I'm asking yeah. I guess so uh yes and no so with with especially with the deal that I've got you know I can't kind of I can't slack on my end so it's like you know if I don't post if I don't do my part I'm not going to gain any followers you know what I'm saying they can do they can curate the playlist and they can you know they could put the machine behind you, but if you're not feeding, if you're not being organic with your fans, you know, with, with the situation I'm in, it's like I have, I, I, you know, I'm still working as, in, not working, I'm not independent anymore, but I still have to have that ethic, you know what I'm saying? Like I still have to make sure I'm talking to my fans, I'm engaging with my fans, like I'm doing my part, because if I don't, then I won't have no followers, they won't want to follow me because I'm not doing my part, the label can do what they do, but if I'm not engaging with my fans, they're not going to care. So it's like, you know, it helps if I'm doing my part, then, you know, it helps because what they're doing helps with what I'm doing. But if I'm not doing it, then they can do with it whatever they can, but it's not going to really work too well if I don't do my part. So, Does having a million followers on a social media platform surprise you? Um, yeah, definitely. I think all the time it's kind of like, you know, I never look at it as like a nonchalant thing. It's kind of always... The one thing that if I'm ever feeling down or if I'm ever going through things, I look at that and I'm just like, you know, this is like, this is why I can't fail. This is why I can't give up because, you know, I have, I, yeah, I look at this every day and I'm like, wow, like it's such a blessed position. Like you can never take it for granted. Um, so, yeah. Are you surprised by the actual amount of followers or the time it took you to get to that amount? Uh, both. Definitely both, because the amount is like, you know, we talked about that since we were kids, you know what I'm saying? Just because, you know, it's not about the clout, it's about the fact that those people heard you out and they, they like you enough to follow you and like to listen to you. And it's like, you know, that puts you in a position to like, you know, be able to speak to them and, you know, it's, and then the time it took, that's, that blows my mind all the time because it's like, I was in a very like dark position just with, you know, with things going on and it was just like, wow, like this happens so fast. Like, this is amazing. It's, it's like it's definitely a huge, huge shock a lot. Is it a difference from what you see when you cross different humps? So for example, when you cross 500,000, when you cross a million, when you cross 1.5, I mean, now you're almost at 2 million. Do you notice anything different with your profile, the algorithm, the followers, the DMs, the messages? Do you notice any difference in between maybe those different humps there? Um, I mean... Looking back. Yeah, I mean, you, there's definitely differences. Like, you know, your followers get different. They get older. They get, you know, they become around the, they become different, like they're around the world, you know, they, you know, you find different people from different places. Um, and then the DMs, they, they get diff, they don't really get different, they just get a lot more, you just get a lot more, it's just more people. Um, but as far as like the in feeling, when it happens, like from 500 to a million, from a million to 1.5, and then from, you know, when I hit 2 million, it's going to feel the exact same. Because I feel like the number, like I said, is not the, the actual number. Like, oh, I have this many followers. Like, it's just the fact that, like, wow. Like, these people, like, they're listening to me. Like, they're hearing me out. Like, they're still hearing me out. Like, from 1 million to 5 million, it's like, you're still hearing me out. Like, it's more of you. That's great. But, like, it's just more dope that, like, that, you know, that, like, that energy. It's like an energy thing for me, I feel like. Is it a higher caliber of well-known, famous, or celebrity people, verified people, verified profiles, commenting, or in your DMs at those various uh, intervals there? Yeah. Um, I mean, of course, over time, the more followers, the bigger, the sometimes the bigger the person that will reach out, you know, like I said, like, 
you know, like Nikita, like, for example, Nikita, she'll, she'll like play Holy Class or she'll, she'll post a song or something. You know what I'm saying? That was at like right before, or that maybe like right after One Million. And then, but sometimes, you know, it'll just be, you know, dancers or artists, upcoming artists, and they might not be as big as them, but, you know, it kind of just really varies. It just really just depends on when who sees you kind of thing. Now, what about money? When it comes to money and it comes to TikTok, do you earn money off of TikTok? Yeah, everyone. So anyone that's on TikTok and that's like, you know, a lot of, they've created what's called the creator fund. Some people don't do the creator fund um, because they feel like it messes up their views. Some people don't feel like that. I personally don't really feel like that. Um, I mean, I use the creator fund. And then also, I never ask my fans to give me gifts. Um, but if you're going, if you go live, your fans can sometimes, like, they can give you gifts and you can make money, like, that way as well. Um, but that's about pretty, about pretty much, like, the only two ways you make money from TikTok. And then you can do promos as well. But that's, like, separate from TikTok, kind of. More uh, indirect way of earning money. Yeah, so it's like TikTok doesn't give you the money, but... You know, a if third Saf party does. If Sephora wants you to post a video on TikTok to do their makeup, then Sephora can, you know, it, like that kind of way. Why don't you ever ask for gifts, personally? Um, I don't think it's uh, right to ask your fans for money. Um, I just, you know, I think that it's it kind of takes away from like the the organicness, you know. And I feel like there's. 12 and 11 year olds that are on my live like they don't need to be giving me money i'm a grown woman i don't need to be asking kids for money you know if they're giving me gifts i can't return their gifts like i can't you know but i always tell them like i don't ask for nothing like i don't want your money like you know i don't i don't get down like that i don't like it <laughs> is the money that you get directly from TikTok lucrative at the amount of following you have at this point lucrative not the indirect. I want to talk about that in a second, but just the direct TikTok money lucrative. is it lucrative. Lucrative. Okay. I don't, I don't know. I'm not even going to lie. I don't know what lucrative means. I kind of have a brain fart, but. <laughs> you know what? Let me actually, let me actually look it up so I can be exact with that. Okay, cool. Myself. <laughs> let me feel a little bit better. <laughs> okay. Let me just jump online here real quick and get the definition for you <laughs> okay on google according to oxford languages lucrative an adjective producing a great deal of profit oh i mean is it profitable i mean it's you like i mean i don't i guess i mean it's, i'm grateful for it like if that's what you're asking like it's a great it's, it's very helpful like you know anything is you know anything is good so now when it comes to promos which is an indirect way to earn money on TikTok. Is that something you indulge in? Um, I mean, if it makes sense, you know. If I, if I know that I like the product and, like, you know, and, I, and it fits, like, my brand, then, you know, yeah, for sure. So you do vet what you, uh, what you do promo-wise. You don't just take any promo. Yeah, I won't just take any promo. You know, I'll, you know, if it's something that I like or if it's something I know that I'll buy and, like, I tr like if I'm not, if I'm gonna promote something, it's like okay, I trust this product to promote it to my fans. Like, I like I'll, I'll this is something I will use. I'm not gonna lie to my fans and tell them that I am gonna use it if I'm not gonna use it. Like, you know. So that's I'm a little I'm a little iffy when I do promos because I just want to make sure like it's something I support and that I like. So I'm not you know I'm always honest with my fans. Uh, and at this point, when it comes to your income. Do you make a full-time living off social media or no? Uh, yeah. I think, yes, yeah. Yeah? No? Not social media. Yeah, not social media. Music. Music, not social media. So, yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah, music, not social media. Social media is kind of like, you know, kind of like my, like, pay the grocery bill or, you know, my pay for my puppy stuff or, like, you know, Something slight, but music is like my biggest. Music is what supports my life. So out of 100%, let's say we had a pie chart. What do you think social media is of that pie slice? Oh, like 20? Like 20%, yeah. 
like 20 percent and of course you make money on youtube yeah youtube yeah and instagram I don't know if you can make direct or indirect at this point. Instagram, for me, at least as far as I know, is like the same as TikTok. It's like indirect. So like if somebody can like, hey, promote this on my story or promote this on your story or can you post it a reel or can you da 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 and like kind of getting like that, but mainly TikTok for stuff like that. Instagram, I know you can make money. I just haven't gotten there yet. Like I said, music is like my biggest, my biggest thing. And, and let me just uh, refresh my words. With YouTube, it could be direct or indirect. Uh, I, I mean, I, 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 guess, I guess so. Like, I'm sure people take promos on YouTube, but I, they make money directly through Google advertising. Yeah, so, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, this might be a little bit more technical. Okay. But okay, out of 100%, Music is how you mainly make money. Mm -hmm. That's your main income. And 20% may be social media. Of that 20%, what do you think that TikTok slice is? Uh, <laughs> probably the, I would say probably the 20%, definitely, okay. yeah. When it comes to your 1.9 followers, do you feel like well, as you increase to 1.9, let me rephrase. Do you feel like you've received more love or more hate? More love, absolutely. A lot, lots of love. You're going to receive hate regardless. Like, you know what I'm saying? We don't live in a perfect world. So, you know, I would definitely have received, you know, I don't call it hate, but like, you know, just negativity. Like, I've definitely received negativity, like 100%. But, you know, I put out a lot of love, so I definitely receive a lot of love. Are you verified at this point on TikTok? Yes. How did you get that blue check? Um, no, um, everything, like all those big milestones happened in the midst of like the remix. So in the remix, the verification actually might have came after I dropped Holy Class. And once I got like a bunch of publications from No Guidance and Holy Class, then they verified me on TikTok. And then like a week later, I got verified on Instagram. And is that something that just organically happens? Is that something the record label gets done or is that something you apply for through the app? No, nah, you just up, like you, uh, you can't apply for verification through TikTok, but you can apply through Instagram. Um, now I've put in a bunch of um, applications for verification on Instagram like everyone does, um, but it didn't actually happen of course until the, the, I got verified before I even talked to the labels and stuff. So I was verified and stuff before I even it even got that far. What, so I guess for tech, technicality, so was it you applying that got it or it just was given to you? Um, TikTok, it just, I woke up one day and it was just, I was verified. Instagram, I was, I didn't, I hadn't recently applied. Now I had applied after um, like no guidance kind of first started, I applied. And then maybe like three months later, that's when I got verified on TikTok and then maybe like a week or two after TikTok then Instagram. So it just kind of like, both of them kind of just happened unexpectedly. I was like, whoa, that's crazy. Was there any feeling uh, after you were verified on TikTok for you? A feeling? Yeah. Oh yeah, I was, I was so excited. Like it made me feel like they thought I was important. So it was like, you know, like my, I know my fans think I'm important, but it's so dope that this app, you know, thought that I was important enough to give me that check mark and you know, I thought that was really dope. Did you notice any difference before the check mark versus after it? Um, I mean, you know, with my fans, like they were excited with me, um, but difference as far as like, like in, within myself or like. I guess differences in the algorithm, if you notice anything, differences in the caliber of uh, well-known famous celebrity people commenting in your DMs, things of that nature? Um, so when you comment on other people's videos, uh, because you're a verified user, um, they'll see those first. The other verified users will see, nine times out of 10, will see those verified comments first. Um, and then, you know, if you, that it just helps you, it, the, the check mark really just helps you like, you know, of course, to labels and stuff like that, it's, it's great, but for when you're trying to get in touch with like other in, other influencers, if they, you know, 
aren't familiar or like if you comment on they're trying to get their attention or something like it's way more likely they'll see you with the check mark you know it's just kind of how that way pretty much works now what about this uh fan pages i love fan pages you do <laughs> i love them so much because a lot of times they're kids and they're just they're so creative and like, they're so sweet and they just make the coolest little dopest fan arts i think it's dope what about fake pages? Are there fake profiles of you on TikTok? I have not seen any fake profiles. I've seen a lot of fan pages. I follow as many as I like find, um, but I have not seen any like impersonating pages. I think it's pretty hard. It's kind of hard to kind of impersonate someone on TikTok because, especially if it's a big user, because nine times out of ten. Their page is verified. You know how many followers they have. It's kind of hard to do that on. Um, but I haven't seen any, like, anywhere. Uh, never been disabled, never been hacked on your TikTok? No. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. 